Hi. Hi again. We're in Genesis chapter 42 now. This is where the brothers get to go down to Egypt. Mm. We're reading verses 1 to 11, is it? Yes. When Jacob saw that there was grain in Egypt, Jacob said to his sons, Why do you look at one another? And he said, Indeed, I have heard that there is grain in Egypt. Go down to that place and buy for us there, that we may live and not die. So Joseph's ten brothers went down to buy grain in Egypt. But Jacob did not send Joseph's brother Benjamin with his brothers, for he said, Lest some calamity befall him. And the sons of Israel went to buy grain among those who journeyed, for the famine was in the land of Canaan. Now Joseph was governor over the land, and it was he who sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brothers came and bowed down before him with their faces to the earth. Joseph saw his brothers and recognized them, but he acted as a stranger to them and spoke roughly to them. And then he said to them, Where do you come from? And they said, From the land of Canaan, to buy food. So Joseph recognized his brothers, but they did not recognize him. Then Joseph remembered the dreams which he had dreamed about them, and said to them, You are spies, you have come to see the nakedness of the land. And they said to him, No, my lord, but your servants have come to buy food. We are all one man's sons. We are honest men. Your servants are not spies. Well, what the irony here, that they don't know they're talking to the brother they dishonestly sent to Egypt. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's 17 years ago. And still haven't no, sorry, told the dad. This is, this is 22 years ago now, because this mm -hmm. is when Joseph is 39. So 22 years ago, you haven't confessed to your dad what you did. And yeah. you have the effrontery to say we are honest men. <laughs> and then there's the reference to the dream, of course, because they bow down. At first, he probably didn't know who they were, and then he realized who they were. And, then he and this is fulfilling the dream from 22 years before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that must have been a great encouragement to Joseph. We don't know why. We don't know why uh, he hasn't acted to reach out to his family before. I think one of the commentaries talks about this later. Mm -hmm. But, but, I think. The shock is that they're down in Egypt. He has not invited them there. He's not brought them down. Yeah. And here they are. So God's providence is being vindicated. Mm -hmm. So jo um, Jacob says for them to go down and buy because he's fearful they're going to die. But even in, in that fear, you don't hear him say, well, maybe we should pray about that. Remember when Abraham went down to Egypt, you know, like there's no recalling of those, those things that you should get God's direction. You don't hear anything about a prayer going on here. No, he's fearful. Yeah. And then you think, well, and he's been promised all he, these things. So he heard the same promises that Abraham did. They were repeated to Isaac. Then they were repeated to Jacob and they all have to do with what God's going to do through his family. Yeah. And here he is saying, we, we're going to die if we don't do this. Mm -hmm. so, but in, in Jacob's stepping out of faith or, or lacking, or lacking faith, faith, anyways, yeah, not completely, mm -hmm. but it's not faith that's really, it's not faith that's really forming his decisions. Yeah. So I, I think this is another great example of the grace of God that in spite of Jacob's failing faith here, his lack of trust that God will take care of them and not let them die. Uh, and and the fact that that his brothers are going down to and going to meet Joseph and things are going to turn out differently than mm -hmm. they thought. All of this is a demonstration of God's grace and his ability to work around our sins. Yeah. So just because their sins doesn't just dismiss them. They're gone. No. God still works with them. Even what's going to happen to them is, is an effort to, to make these men more honest. And it does work that way. Yeah.
to recognize that they've done something wrong. When we did our study on this in, with our Christian friends many years ago, before we had a community of ex-witnesses around us, mm -hmm. we t entitled the study, gr was it grief? It was guilt, guilt grief, grief, and, and grace. grace. And, the, and the part that hit us the hardest as witnesses, of course, was the grace part, i.e. Mm -hmm. this whole entire book has to be interpreted in light of grace, mm -hmm. all of grace, especially this life of Jacob here. Yeah. Everything that's happening, it's not because he has any extra virtue mm. above other men, that's for sure. And and even the sons, you know, they they have fooled their dad into thinking Joseph is no more. But they can't fool God. And there there will be consequences. There will be consequences even though they're receiving grace. There mm. will also be mixed with that a lot of suffering. For, no. their, for themselves and for their, their children. This is where we get sometimes stumbled even over things like predestination. That you think, didn't God foretell to Abraham, even before he had a single son, mm -hmm. he foretold that his seed would go down to Egypt and be captive there. Yeah. 400 years. And you think, well, that's the will of God. It's not that God planned it or wants it. It's an awareness of God because God is outside of time. He sees the behavior of people. He knows they're going to sin. Well, Jacob is making a choice here, which is really not in faith. Yeah. Just as Abraham did when he was still Abram, mm -hmm. in chapter 12 of Genesis, he makes a choice to go to Egypt for the similar for similar reasons, famine, mm -hmm. and ends up almost losing his life, or thinking he's going to lose his wife, and wants to sacrifice his, his wife so to save his life, and then he takes a an Egyptian maid servant who doesn't work out very yeah. well in the to, long run. To try and, and speed up God's plan yeah. and make it work out. But despite all of that, grace, mm -hmm. grace triumphs, right? Even yeah. though the consequences will be visited on here, it's the brothers. The brothers made a choice too, not just Jacob. Mm -hmm. The brothers made a choice to sacrifice their brother for their own, for their own sake, whatever choice. Yeah. They have, they have yeah. deceived their father now for for. 22 years and they're guilt-ridden you can tell that from their conversation but they don't pay the price it wouldn't seem anyway mm. in, in not in an outward way they don't pay the price for these terrible things they've done and these choices they made it's their descendants who will pay the price yeah. of becoming so slaves in maybe Egypt. in the suffering of guilt yeah you know, but but their children are still going to reap a, a lot of consequences simply because of this, because all of this works out to bringing them to Egypt yeah. and putting them in slavery. But it is the birth of a nation. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's a lot of suffering involved, a lot of people, and it, some of it was not inevitable. Mm -hmm. These children or grandchildren of these brothers didn't choose to go to Egypt and didn't choose to become slaves, but that's, that's providence again. Mm -hmm. Here's what Derek Kidner has to say about some of this. In his wonderful commentary, uh, this is page 198 of Kidner, how severe a famine could be in Egypt, which is a thin, fertile strip between deserts, is twice indicated by records of its inhabitants resorting to cannibalism. But because Palestine was watered by rainfall and Egypt by the Nile, the harvest seldom failed simultaneously in both. Mm. That's an interesting point because it's not mm. self-evident that these two places would be suffering famine at yeah. the same time. Again, the providence of God. Yeah. Even mm -hmm. in the weather. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You've got Edersheim, I think. Yeah. Edersheim says, "It is, if it be, if it be asked why in his prosperity Joseph had not informed his father of his life and success." We answer that in such a history, safe, safety lay in quiet waiting upon God. If Joseph had learned the great lesson of his life, it was this, that all in the past had been of God. Nor would he now interfere with further guidance on his part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can't be sure why he's paused so long. He's been in power now for nine years. Mm -hmm. We just have to guess. Yeah. Then John Calvin. Moses begins in this chapter to treat of the occasion which drew Jacob with his whole family into Egypt. 
and thus leaves it to us to consider by what hidden and unexpected methods God may perform whatever he has decreed. Though, therefore, the providence of God is in itself a labyrinth, yet when we connect the issue of things with their beginnings, that admirable method of operation shines clearly in our view, which is not generally acknowledged only because it is far removed from our observation. Also, our own indolence hinders us from perceiving God with the eyes of faith as holding the government of the world, because we either imagine fortune to be the mistress of events, or else, adhering to near and natural causes, we weave them together and spread them as veils before our eyes. In other words, we just misunderstand circumstances, mm -hmm. because we're in the immediate, the present, right? Yeah. Whereas, therefore, scarcely any more illustrious representation of divine providence is to be found than this history furnishes. Let pious readers carefully exercise themselves in meditation upon it, in order that they may acknowledge these those things which, in appearance, are fortuitous to be directed by the hand of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And some of some of Whittley commented that history is his story, mm -hmm. and I think that just about sums it up in a single phrase. Yeah, yeah, God is in all history. Because we're players in the history, it's like we're we're characters in a novel, right? But we can only see our immediate surroundings. We don't know yeah. how this thing began and how it's going to turn out. Yeah, yeah. I think Lewis writes about that. What's the yeah. link? Oh, um, <laughs> what was it? Uh, JWs? No, five JWs lose God's organization and find grace. Yeah, I think that's the second in our Genesis playlist. Yeah. So. It's autobiographical. Mm -hmm. I think you'll enjoy it. Yeah. See you soon. Bye.